Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, today I rise to tell a preventable, horrific story. 22-year-old Lakin Riley, a nursing student, was killed by an illegal immigrant. This bright young woman had her whole life ahead of her. She represented what our country needs more of, a life dedicated to caring for others. Like all Iowans, my heart goes out to her family and her friends who continue to grieve this tragic loss. The reality is, Lakin's heartbreaking story did not have to happen. In 2022, Jose Antonio Ibarra illegally crossed over the border into El Paso and claimed asylum. Instead of being detained while he was processed, he was released into our country never to be heard from again. That is, folks, until he was arrested in New York City for endangering a child. Was he held to face trial for this crime in New York City? Nope. Nope. Was he deported for this crime or even for coming here illegally? Nope. New York officials released him so quickly that ICE couldn't even try to lodge a detainer, even if they wanted to. Meanwhile, Ibarra made his way to Georgia, where he disfigured and killed an innocent young girl who was simply out for a jog. Madam President, this could have been avoided, but Biden's failure to enforce the laws at our border allowed it to happen. How many young Americans must die? How many families must be ripped apart for this administration to wake up and take border security seriously. For more than eight years, I have warned against the dangers of letting illegal immigrants who have already broken our laws, again, those that have broken our laws, roam the country and continue their lawlessness. I have repeatedly called on this body to step up and protect innocent Americans from criminals who are here in our country illegally and pass my bill, Sarah's Law. Eight years ago, Iowans Michelle and Scott Root woke up to every parent's worst nightmare. Their daughter, Sarah, right here, beautiful Sarah Root, was killed by a drunk driver. Sarah, a 21-year-old from Council Bluffs, had just graduated from Bellevue University in Nebraska with a 4.0 GPA and a bachelor's degree in criminal investigations. She was headed home after celebrating her important life milestone with family and friends. She had her entire life ahead of her. But while she was stopped at a traffic light, Sarah was struck and killed by Edwin Mejia, an illegal immigrant. His blood alcohol level was three times over the legal limit. One would think her killer would clearly meet immigration and customs enforcement's enforcement priorities. But no, nope. Citing the Obama administration's November 2014 memo on immigration, immigration enforcement priorities, ICE declined, declined to take custody of Mejia despite his repeated driving offenses and history of skipping court dates. 
before the Root family could even lay their daughter to rest, Mahia posted a $5,000 bond. 5,000 bucks. He was released, and just like in the past, folks, he disappeared, never to be seen again. Now, here we are, folks. We are over eight years later. Sarah's killer is still at large, after that 5,000 bucks, and able to carelessly harm others. To rub salt in the wound, the Biden administration has removed Mahia from ICE's most wanted list. No big deal, right? No parent should have to endure the pain of losing a child like the Root family did, and I know them personally. But unfortunately, the Riley family is experiencing this same heartbreak. A loophole in our law means Sarah's killer escaped justice. But today, we can do something to ensure no other family has to go through the pain Sarah's parents have felt every day for eight long years. My bill, named in Sarah's honor, would close the alarming loophole that let Sarah's killer go free. It would merely require, it would just require ICE to detain, just to detain otherwise deportable illegal immigrants charged with killing or seriously injuring another person. Is that too much to ask? To detain someone who has killed another American? It also requires ICE to inform victims and family members of critical information pertaining to the investigation. Right now, family members are left in the dark. Had Sarah's law been enacted at the time of her death, law enforcement would have detained her killer instead of allowing him to flee from justice. The Root family would have been kept up to date on his status and federal immigration authorities' efforts to remove him from the country. Simply put, this should be an easy one, folks. Sarah and Lakin's deaths are both tragic and unfortunately are doomed to be repeated. Thanks to this administration's broken and ill-informed policies. Those who come here illegally and harm our citizens should, without question, be a priority for removal. It's just common sense, folks. Otherwise deportable illegal immigrants who commit violent crimes, if they commit them here, they should face justice. We can no longer prioritize illegal immigrants over public safety. We must pass Sarah's law to send this message loud and clear for Sarah's family, for Lakin's family, and for the countless American families that Sarah's law would protect. Madam President, as if in legislative session and notwithstanding Rule 22, I ask unanimous consent that the Judiciary Committee be discharged from further consideration of S-160 and the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration further that the bill be considered read a third time and passed and the motion to reconsider be considered, made, and laid upon the table. Is there objection? Reserving the right to object. Majority Whip. Madam President, as Chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, I'm reserving the right to object. 
But I want to make it clear we can all agree that non-citizens who are convicted of violent crimes should be detained and removed from the United States, period. Under current law, under current law, any non-citizen who entered the country illegally, violated the terms of their status, or had their visa revoked can be ordered detained by ICE officials. Current law, current law also requires the detention of individuals with serious criminal convictions and those who have committed murder, rape, or any, cr any crime of violence or theft offense with a term of imprisonment of at least one year. The law also gives ICE the discretion to detain or release a non-citizen in cases where a non-citizen has merely been charged but not convicted. This bill that we're considering now by the Senator from Iowa would require ICE to detain any individual charged with a crime that resulted in death or serious bodily injury of another person pending their criminal case, no matter what the circumstances or the nature of the crime and no exceptions. As just one example, a victim of trafficking or domestic violence who defended themselves against an abuser would have to be detained under the law. Most immigrants in the United States are law-abiding individuals who are seeking a better life. Studies have shown that immigrants have no impact on crime rates and immigrants are less likely to commit crimes than ordinary U.S. citizens. But the sweeping approach in this bill would deprive immigrants of the due process that everyone is afforded to prove that they are innocent of a crime. I agree with many of my colleagues that we need a more orderly system to process recent arrivals at the border and ensure that bad actors are detained if they have serious criminal convictions. Recently, a bipartisan group of senators and the White House began negotiating a change in our immigration laws and a tough border deal. It was written by the Republicans' designated negotiator, Senator James Lankford of Oklahoma, along with two other senators, one an independent from Arizona and the other a Democrat from Connecticut. The bill that they wrote to make our border safer and to deal with immigration was endorsed by the National Border Patrol Council, which represents the men and women on the border who are risking their lives every day to keep us safe. I had personal concerns about this bill, but I wanted to move it forward. And yet, when it came to a vote, the vast majority of senators on the other side of the aisle opposed it at the request of Donald Trump, who tanked the border agreement for his own cynical reasons. What were those reasons? One House Republican said, and I quote, let me tell you, I'm not willing to do damn much right now to help a Democrat to help Joe Biden's approval rating. President Trump himself was crystal clear. He said, quote, blame it on me if the bill fails. That bill was our vehicle and opportunity to work on a bipartisan basis to change many of the provisions in immigration law, to make America safer, and to make our border security more effective. Some extremists have said the quiet part out loud. Donald Trump doesn't want a solution to our challenges at the border. He wants a political issue for November. It is time that Republican colleagues and Democratic colleagues stop talking about the border and one-off responses to it and start legislating, rather than vilifying all immigrants based on a few bad actors. It is a tragedy what happened to these two young women. There is no excuse for it, and those responsible should be held accountable. I urge my colleagues to do the best that we can to come up with an immigration reform that resolves not only this serious issue, but all the other issues that we are haunted with on a regular basis. I object. The objection is heard. Madam President. Senator from Iowa. Madam President, uh, I, I am very sad that we're on the floor today and that uh, Sarah's law has been objected to. We have been down this road before many times over through the years since Sarah Root's death. Now, I, I do understand that ICE has discretion, and that's what we're discussing today, is the fact that ICE had dis discretion and chose to allow Edwin Mejia to post bond of $5,000 to disappear into the night. Before Sarah was even laid to rest, Edwin Mejia was long gone and has yet 
to face justice for Sarah's family. In July 2020, a Mexican national was drunk driving in Texas and struck and killed a Chicago resident and two retired U.S. Army officers. All were part of a pro-law enforcement motorcycle club. The Mexican national was out on bond and awaiting trial for allegedly striking a man with his truck in 2018, biting the victim's back and biting off a portion of his ear. If Sarah's law had been on the books, he would have been detained in 2018 to await trial. In June 2011, a Chicago resident was killed in a drunk driving accident. The driver, a Mexican national, was driving with a blood alcohol level four times over the legal limit. He struck and killed a Chicago resident, dragged the victim's body 300 feet, and then attempted to run away on foot. He was bailed out, again, bailed out, not held, bailed out and fled to Mexico. He was extradited back to the U.S. in 2022. If Sarah's law had been on the books, he would have been detained and not been able to flee to Mexico. In March 2021, a Mexican national shot and killed his next door neighbor in Chicago. He then injured the three officers attempting to arrest him. The Mexican national was arrested in 2011 for driving with an open container. In 2015, he was arrested again for aggravated assault. In 2012, he attempted to lie his way into a visa reserved for victims of criminal activity. And he also twice unsuccessfully applied for the DACA program in 2014 and 2015. If Sarah's law had been on the books, he would likely have been detained after the aggravated assault in 2015. And again, we would have another innocent that was killed still alive today. So these are just a handful of examples of where Sarah's law would have made a difference. And I do understand that there is an objection to the discretionary part of this bill. And the example that was given is those that are being trafficked for, for sex type operations. Sex trafficking is very real. But I have also, because I have worked in this space of domestic violence and violence against women, I do and have heard from those that have been sex trafficked that sometimes the only way to break away from those that are trafficking them is actually be, to be arrested and pulled away from those Johns or those sex traffickers. So maybe to put them in an area of safety would be the right thing to do. So I appreciate having been heard. I will continue to work on behalf of the Root family, on behalf of the Riley family, and others that have lost loved ones to those who should not be here in our country. And with that, Madam President, I yield.